In this lesson, we'll explore the application interface on a high level, pointing out specific panels and features that are most important. So here I have the Essentials workspace opened up. And Essentials is the default workspace. If you have some other workspace open, things are going to look very different for this overview. So I would recommend switching to Essentials if you do have something that doesn't look like this. I also have a project opened up called Demo Project .fla. So here we have a full view of the default application interface. And what we see here is that we have a menu bar up top, and the menu bar contains many useful commands and features that can be accessed via these menu options. And these menu options have things to do with document properties, individual object properties, file properties, export and publish, anything you can think of. These are often accessible through other areas of the program as well. Directly below this, we have our stage area. In here, we have the stage, which is a visual representation of anything that's going on in our particular project. So we can see here on the stage, we have a number of different elements that exist on the stage itself. This area around the stage is known as the work area or the pasteboard, and anything that's on that area isn't going to show up when we actually publish our movie. Directly above the stage in the pasteboard, we have an indicator that shows us which scene we're on, and also some tools to switch between scenes or to edit specific symbols that we have within our library. Here we also find our zoom controls. Directly below the stage, we can see our timeline. The timeline consists of a number of different layers and layer folders, which contain frames spread out across the timeline. Flash Professional is a frames-based timeline application. So unlike something like video editing software like Premiere or audio editing software like Audition, we actually have time being segmented into these little frames. And then we have a frames per second, which we can see right here. And that's known as the frame rate. And it's signified by FPS for frames per second. We see that here, and that determines exactly how much time these frames will actually take up in terms of minutes, seconds, and so forth. Here we also see we have the motion editor. The motion editor is applicable for motion tweens. So if we select a motion tween here and then go to the motion editor, we see that there is a graph-based editor that we can use to fine-tune any of our animations. Along the side here are docked a number of different panels. By default in the Essentials workspace, we have the Properties panel open up here. And the Properties panel actually adjusts and changes what it displays depending on what is selected at any given time. So we can see right now we have a motion tween selected. If I click in the work area here, it's going to select our document for us. We'll be able to change some of our stage properties, such as frames per second, width, height, and stage background color. We also have the library panel here. And the library panel contains any of the assets that we are using in our particular project. So any symbol assets that we've created or any imported assets like images or sounds. Assets such as basic shapes or basic text fields do not show up in the library. Right next to the properties panel and the library panel are a number of different other panels. So we have things like the color panel in which we're able to mix different colors. We also have swatches here where we can use a color picker to choose from our swatches that are already defined. Below here, we have our alignment panel. So if we select a number of items, 
We can align, distribute, match, or space. And we can also tie this to the stage if we want to through this checkbox right here. We then have the info panel, which gives us information about anything that's currently selected. Since I have nothing selected right now, it's simply displaying the X and Y location of my cursor. We have the transform panel, which allows us to do both traditional transforms and also 3D transforms upon objects. Below here, we have our code snippets panel. And these allow us to go in and just drag and drop different little chunks of action script onto various objects on our stage. We have our components panel, which has things like video components and user interface components we can use in a project. And motion presets, which allows us to choose from a variety of interesting presets and view a preview that's supplied with these presets. So these can be applied to documents on the stage without having to actually go in there and manually uh, perform these tweens. Directly under that, we have the project window. And the project window is a way of grouping a number of different files together for a specific target. So perhaps we have a project that uses a number of different files, but some of these files target Air for Android, some target Air for iOS, and some of these target desktop. It's mostly an organizational feature. And then you can also add a variety of panels to this column here. For instance, here's the cooler extension that I've added as a panel. The last piece we'll talk about is over here along the side, we have the Flash Professional Toolbar. The toolbar contains all of the different tools that you can use to create and manipulate objects upon the stage. So things such as selection tools, sub-selection tools, free transform and gradient tools, 3D translation and rotation tools, the lasso tool, pen tools, text tools, a variety of shapes such as line, rectangle, oval, and so forth, and then some freeform tools such as the pencil tool for creating strokes or the brush tool for creating fills. We also have things like the deco tool and the bone tool as well as the bind tool. And these are both used with inverse kinematics to create puppets. We then have the paint bucket and the ink bottle tool, which are used to both wash color on a fill or stroke, and then some other basic tools like eyedropper, eraser, the hand tool for panning around, zoom tool for magnifying our content, stroke color, fill color, the ability to reset the stroke and fill to black and white, and the ability to swap both of those. And that's pretty much the Flash Professional CS6 interface in a nutshell.